Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Sunday night episode on Single Parents United YouTube channel. As always, we've got Stephen. He's beaming in from Port Aventura today. He's on his <laughs> on his jolly holidays, um, and tonight we're going to be having a chat to uh, Wendy Brown. Hello, Hello. Wendy. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank. It's really great to have you on, Wendy. Um, Wendy is a member of our Facebook group, and we're just going to have a chat to her tonight about her single parent story um, and about how she influenced me to do some dodgy dad dancing on the group and, <laughs> and just a bit about, about her background. So, Wendy, would you like to, first of all, just introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm Wendy. Um, I've got three children, uh, three beautiful children. I've got a 13, nearly four, well, so, oh, Sunday. Um, she's 14 on Sunday, a seven-year-old girl and a two-year-old boy as well. Um, I've been separated from my husband since February, at the beginning of this year. Um, so, and my relationship marriage was 20 years um, of us being together. So wow. long relationship um, and still quite, although it was all the way back in February and so much has happened already this year, it still really feels quite new and quite raw. And there's so still so many things I'm sort of getting used to and things like that. So yeah, um, I do multiple things. I'm currently, in my last year of university with a teaching degree, um, I'm going to be doing teacher training in September, hopefully, if all schools and COVID disappears forever. We all hope and pray. Um, I part-time, I'm a professional singer, professional entertainer. I teach dance and singing and performing arts. And I also direct and choreograph youth theatre production shows um, all over the youth side of England as well, all kind of around all that. So yeah. Life's really busy, but I love it like that. I love challenges and I love being busy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it sounds like it. <laughs> I don't know how people cope. I mean, I know I know a few people who study as well as uh, being a parent and working. How do you how do you manage that that balance? How do you spin in all them plates? I think, isn't it? How yeah. You... Yeah. It's, it, it is hard. There's no getting around it. It is hard. Um, and I think you have to be a certain person to do it. Not demeaning um undermining anybody else but yeah it's a lot about time management um it's a lot about management in general really getting the amount good good amount of rest eating properly knowing when to stop and have a break um as well i mean there although i'm saying this there is a balance as well where sometimes i can't i wake up at three o'clock in the morning and i can't sleep at all for one reason or another whether it be because of the situation that i'm going through or just normal life that you just wake up at three o'clock in the morning and i may get up and study for a couple of hours because it's a distraction and things like that i hadn't planned that time but i end up doing that and then during the day i think you know what? i'm just, I'm just too tired today but i've already done a couple of hours at three o'clock in the morning so it's it's fine i can sit down have my chocolate biscuit and a cup of tea and I don't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know I certainly couldn't do it. And I think, Steve, you, you managed to do a bit of studying, didn't you, as well as working and stuff? Yeah, full time working and studying. It's mental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, parent, wow. Uh, I know. So what are you, what, what's your, what do you want to train to teach? What? Um, it's early years and primary education so yeah so any basically teaching the curriculum or the early years of cur cur curriculum from babies all the way up to um, children of 11 years yeah but I think just because basically I've performed all my life and, and done kind of teaching with singing and dancing but um, as many parents will know with children those kind of activities are always extracurricular activities. They're outside of school or they're on a Saturday morning, um, competitions and shows and things like that. Um, they're not a nine to five job Monday to Friday. And it's always on a self-employed basis as well. So I never knew when money was coming in or how much money was coming in. It was very seasonal. Summertime, I'd be loaded. And then January, February, March, I'd be skint. Um, yeah, sometimes I'd get 
a Friday, Saturday, Sunday gig, and then I wouldn't have a gig for a couple of months. And that was fine while I was young and free. Um, but then when you have children and then you get to the age that I am of 21, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you start going, hang on a minute, I, um, this is probably not a nice stable foundation for me and my family. And maybe I need to, um, you know, do, where do I want to go with this? Do, what, what do I want to do? It, it's great fun. But um, yeah, so basically I just started looking into some other options of teaching. And although I've got 22 years worth of experience in teaching, singing and dancing, um, it meant nothing as far as um, the government or working for the government. You said um, how busy you are, Wendy. Have you found that um, that's helped you? Has it been a bit of a distraction from things that are going on with your separation and stuff? Yes, again, um, yes, yes and no. Um, I found that when the lockdown hit, um, I didn't need to go into uni as much or at all. Um, And I didn't have any gigs. I didn't have any children's parties. There was no performance work at all. Um, So I was stuck at home. And that all, um, considering I separated in the middle of February and then the lockdown hit at the beginning of March, it was right at the beginning. Um, And things were really, really rough and tough then. Mm. So at that time, I think at that time it did really help me because I just completely broke, if I'm honest, it just really broke me completely. And I don't think I could have gone anywhere or done anything. Um, yeah. So for that kind of first eight weeks, it was really good not to do anything or not have to, if I wanted to stay in bed, if I wanted to cry, if I wanted to scream and shout and be frustrated, I I had just my four walls to do that and, and not any responsibility to go anywhere. But then when I started realising that, you know what, I can't carry on like this. I, I think the saying is you either, you know, you either fall or you get back up again. Um, and I decided to get back up again. I needed to find those distractions, um, whatever it was, keeping busy, whether it be work, studying, um, getting out, talking to people, joining groups, trying to do something different just to stop me overthinking and dwelling on stuff. It, yeah, it's it's been really, really helpful. And it's been helpful ever since then I've found that one of those as well though that aspect of keeping busy is one of the the aspects that really works for me it's a really really good distraction whatever whatever it is yeah I mean your separation I mean you could look at it two ways couldn't you, you could look at it as it was good timing um <laughs> being at the start of lockdown um or you could look at it because I mean I say good timing because I presume that relationship was kind of not going well so it was good timing in fact in the way that if you hadn't have separated, you'd have been locked, locked down. Yeah, together, which yeah. would have been yeah. really stressful. So it could have been a really good thing. Or on the other hand, it could have been a really, really, really bad timing with all the having to deal with the separation and after dealing with everything with the virus. So um, but how did you find it? Did you find it was almost a bit of a positive that you were out of that relationship and not having to be um, stuck inside 24-7 with, with someone or, or not? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think so. I think as much as, I mean, a lot of people have said to me from, I think it's difficult to describe how you, how you feel because you feel a certain way personally. And then other people have told me from the outside what it, what it looked like or what, Mm. what they felt for me or how they were seeing it. They said to like for my mum, for example, she said to me, it's been twice as hard for you because of the lockdown. You've got to go through this, this separation and, and go through a lot of arguments, debates with the children, court processes. Um, yeah, just lots of horrible bitterness, nastiness that was going around at the time. And I had nowhere, I couldn't, I had nowhere to go and nowhere to vent. And um, my children were taken away from me for a little while as well, which right. absolutely, absolutely broke me. Um, there's just nothing like it. And it was a point of just having to deal with it. There was no other choice. It was, you know, there was nowhere to go. There was nowhere to vent. Um, that was it. it you know, not, yeah, it's just, it's difficult to say whether it was a, um, a positive or a negative because I think now it was a positive, but at the time, <laughs> no, <laughs> it didn't feel yeah. like it at all. No. Uh, was it um, a mutual thing or did you decide to leave the relationship? 
Um, I decided to leave the relationship, but I had said for a good four months going up to before leaving him, even um, though he denies that and he says that that it, that isn't true and he, he doesn't know why I left and so on and so forth. There was a good four months up to before I left that I was just saying, look, this isn't it isn't working. Something's not right. We can we make a change? Can we can we talk about this? As you know. I understand if, if if you don't get what I'm saying, but I need you to understand that I feel this way and it's important to me. So that's, you know, and this is really having an effect on our relationship. If we continue to carry on like this, we're going to break and I don't want us to break. So let's make a change now. And I was doing that and doing that and he was just exhausting me and nothing, you know, you I got the odd, you know, the odd initial changes like you do. Um, and then it was just flipping, flipping right back again. And I was just, yeah, it was just exhausting. And I'd had quite a few, it wasn't just a couple of months, although that was a couple of months of me talking to him, there was quite a few years of this just getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. So, so making that decision, um, just going off what a lot of our single parents tell us and what, what we felt um, personally is, um, do you, do you ever feel guilt because you made that decision um, on the kids' side? Because it, to, even though it might be the right decision for mm -hmm. you and your kids, there's always that feeling of guilt, isn't there, that you've had to... Always, yeah, yeah. Although I know it was the right decision. And my eldest actually says, please don't go back. Please don't go back. I don't want you to go back. And it's had that much an effect on her. Um, she's she's older and obviously he's taken in a lot more um, you do they don't ask for that you don't bring the children into the world to break up their ideal parent you know they, they just see you as mum and dad even with the arguments you know you, as you know you know people have abuse and things in their relationships um, and the kids just go along with it because they're brought up in it they're developing in it and they see it as being normal and when you actually go well no this is not right. That's that's why we need to separate. We need to go. They're like, well, yeah, but no, but it's fine. It's fine because they've put up with it for so long, and mm. you and Daddy just kiss and make up, and everything's okay afterwards. No, it it, it it's not. So, yeah, I think I still feel really, really guilty. I still mm. I, I can't stand this feeling of 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 guilt and things. But I must say again, the longer time is going on and the more developments I'm seeing from my kids, my kids are so much happier, so much more and so much happier. Um, they're adapting to the situation so much better. Just yesterday, my daughter um, made a card on her last day at school and she read it out to me and said, oh, just, just let you know, mummy, um, um, I know things have been really, really hard for you and they're going to be this Christmas, but I, I just hope that I can make it the best Christmas for you this year. It really is going to be the best Christmas ever from your loving, loving daughter. I was like, oh. <laughs> where does that come from? She's seven. Yeah, um, but that, that's her adaption, you know, that's her adaption to it and realising that there's no more, yeah, but aren't you going to be with daddy? And isn't daddy going to be here? And there's no more of that. It's It's been difficult. I get it. But it's going to get better and it is better already so yeah we can really see that now yeah and it's a really positive way of thinking that and i think that's one thing that's come across from you in the short time that i'm going to say we've known each other but we it's like we've not really known each other we've only met yeah. see the same and you're not even spoke on the phone or anything but we feel yeah. like we know you but you, you've come across as nice. somebody who's really positive and that mm. that's not just coming from me and steve that's other people in the group of Mm. edit your posts and um, mm. the, the singing that you've done and everything you come across as a really really positive upbeat forward thinking like you said moving on person and that is it really it's, it's brilliant that you can think like that and it's it's hard isn't it it's hard to think like that really it, it is yeah it is and um, i think it's um one thing one thing i've learned and i, I think a major thing possibly is something that happened to me is my daughter was diagnosed with heart disease um when she was born and she had open heart surgery when she was 12 days old right. um all of those kind of things again were while I was put in that situation of there's nothing I can do I'm her mum and I I, I think as, as a mum you just feel like whatever it is I'll protect you I'll be here and I can do it I can fix anything you want and for that re that completely different scenario to this situation I couldn't I could only hand her over to the doctors 
and say, please do something, save her. Uh, and even then the doctor said to me, I can't guarantee anything. I can only go in there and do my best. And when you're hearing things like that, and it's only when you're in that position yourself that you just think, what do I do? I either fall or I continue. I keep getting back up again. Yeah. And I've kind of used those same things here. When, when I'm in that state of being broken, I acknowledge it. Yeah. I indulge in it. I eat chocolate. I drink a lot. <laughs> I sing at the top of my lungs. Yeah. Um, I get on the phone to my friends and I go, you know what? Oh, my gosh. Ah, and I get it all out. And I just think it's just today. This is just today. It's a yeah. today. Tomorrow is a different day. It Well, maybe it might be tomorrow as well, but it isn't forever. Yeah. And again, what was happening five years time? Uh, what was happening five years ago? It wasn't what was happening right now. So anything can happen again. And as long as you yeah. want to change, as long as you want a change and something good to happen, it can happen, but it's got you it's got to happen from you've got to have that kind of positive thinking even in the really down moments that do you know what I've gone through a really traumatic event I'm okay to cry I'm okay to feel like really rubbish and I'm gonna just take all that in now and just let it out and everybody else around me should know as well that I'm gonna shout at them for a couple of days <laughs> if they love me and they know what someone going through and they want to stick around through the good times and the bad times yeah. And they'll take that on board. And yeah, and then when I feel feel like I'm picking myself up again, I'll go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the other day. I was just having one of them days. And yeah, I just find that really, really helps. The main yeah. thing, really indulging in those really crappy moments as well as the good moments. Yeah. Oh, we, we're used to being shouted at by women at certain times. <laughs> it's the month, aren't we, Steve? So we're not... <laughs> <laughs> We know where you're coming from. I can just imagine you as a teacher, Wendy. Like, I think you'd be absolutely awesome. You just, I can just imagine you teaching and just like bursting into song about we're going to do some maths today. I was like, oh. I'm terrible at that. When anybody says anything like a phrase, oh, is it? I can't remember now what my daughter says. Um, oh, I'll have to try and remember it later on. But she says something, and if it's like a line from a song. Um, I go, da, 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 da. And she goes, oh, mummy, don't do that. You know, the other day, you know, the other day, uh, mummy, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, terrible for that. Just your way through the day. You mentioned, um, you mentioned a really good point before, um, which brings me to draw some out of it about being in the present. Because what a lot of us do without realizing it is we start thinking about what went wrong and all that when if you start thinking about the present moment i've been guilty of it on this holiday i've gone into overthinking and i should have been in that present moment with harry and it's a it's a real hard trick to do but um we did some training on it at work to try starting off with the shower and then starting off with a drive and in them three minutes in the shower you just totally think about the water the soap Obviously, in James's case, you won't have any soap, but um, yeah. <laughs> and then driving, thinking about you know what gear you're in, what you're looking at ahead of you, rather than thinking about all the crap in the past. Um, so it's a, it's an art, isn't it? And it brings me on to my next point, really, Wendy. Which this is a crucial episode because there's a lot of pressure on you here, Wendy, because we're leading right into Christmas and we've got a lot of new members, a lot of members who are going through their first Christmas on their own and you are one of them. And it's really what, how are you preparing for your first Christmas on your own and what, what tips have you got? Have you got any any songs you want to break out into to inspire us all? Or Christmas is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> I can't. Everyone cry. Been <laughs> way through it and eat chocolate. She's already sold us. <laughs> but, yeah, the wine's coming out. Yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, it's. I suppose even just today, I've had to make a decision. I've had to refocus and make that decision of this is just about me and the kids, just about me and the kids. Stop thinking about this big, wider overthinking area that maybe we could bring this in and maybe we could try and do this and try and 
no 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 it's not like that anymore and we can't there's too much emotion too much bitterness or, or you know it's still too raw why why are you trying to make something that it isn't um wh what it is is enough that's that's all i would say um with anything is again in the moment right now is enough today Christmas Day is one day. I know you mentioned this on one of your posts. It's one day. It is a really special day. It's like your wedding day. But what you don't want to do is ruin it and ruin it by that over <laughs> well, not really like that. <laughs> to a woman, the most important day. Um, you don't want to ruin it by overthinking it. Mm. Again, doing too much you shouldn't do. Because again, think back as a child, put yourself in a child's shoes. Instead of putting yourself in your shoes, if you are putting your children first and all you are really worried about is that your children are going to be happy and have a great day and not be too affected by this whole craziness that's happened to them, then put yourselves in their shoes. What What is it that's going to make them happy? They want to make sure that Santa comes. They want to make sure that they get presents. They want to make sure that mum's happy, dad's happy, everybody is happy. And yeah, that that is, that is the main thing. What I call like the core context point that you just want to work on and if you just work on that and not think oh yeah but daddy's not here or mommy's not here and we normally do this and we normally do that and they won't care because all they'll see is joy and laughter and as long as you're both on the same page that doesn't always work but if you can try and both be on the same page either parties that's even better and if not as long as one of you is on that straight road from for my situation daddy might be saying that daddy might be thinking that but that's what that's fine for daddy but what we're going to do is we're going to do this and it's going to be great it's going to be amazing it's going to be fine i know daddy said that but don't worry about that because what we're going to do is we're going to do this that and that's all you need to concentrate on just that you're going to be fine and this christmas is going to be amazing as long as you keep implementing that then they tend to think more about that because they want to they want to think about all the fun stuff and all the chocolate and all the sweets and the presents rather than all the depressing horrible stuff they're not interested in it we are because it affects us the most and we dwell on it they don't and no, that's, I, think, yeah. I think it's really good advice that i think it when you're kind of on your own as a single parent, it also gives you the opportunity to do things your way as well. Mm, and like yeah. said, really focus on what do the what do the kids want, not what does if it's your ex part, what do they want, what will make them happy? Can we go and see these relatives because they don't get on and all that kind of stuff? It's just you, isn't it? You can you can do things your own way and you've not got anybody to question your decisions, have you? So in a way it's you're in a really, really good position. Yeah, and, and again, you need to just, you need to focus, I would suggest focusing on that with you and the kids, not the other partner. Oh, well, so-and-so, they're doing this and they're doing that. And it's so easy to get personal with it. Oh, are they? All oh, right, I wonder why they're doing that. I wonder why they're saying that. Ignore all that. It doesn't matter. You know, that you have to kind of think that they don't exist anymore if that's a way of dealing with it that they're they're not there when the kids are with them they're with them and it's, it's nothing to do with you anymore separate that emotional tie that you you have with them and just focus on on you and the kids and again focus on that positivity that you're now going to have with them there's no more of of that sadness or bitterness and that it, it, it's all the good stuff that's coming now do you think uh wendy obviously you'll be well aware james is short term memory loss do you think you could put that advice into a song, make a song? For <laughs> you can write the lyrics and do a song for Christmas Day and then remember with let memory. It, let it, it's let it go, let it go. That's <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I've got a really bad memory, Wendy, just so you know. Okay, I, yeah. <laughs> worryingly, worryingly bad. Yeah, like, yeah i've got alarms set in my phone all the time and um, it lists all the time and steve has to remind me about things all the time and stuff i didn't even know we were interviewing you tonight wendy he told me <laughs> someone else yeah. <laughs> <laughs> steve, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna bring something up that you mentioned before when you said about focusing on the driving didn't you were you focusing on driving all these times recently? You've had these crashes, or what were you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, your mind was somewhere else, mate. On it, <laughs> three crashes in two weeks. Oh, but they were all they were all that non faults, non faults. Yeah. 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 Fine, he's got away with it. <laughs> okay. 
his fault. I was on the phone, parked up, talking to him while uh, an Eddie Storbike truck decided to reverse into me. What was that about? So that's next to do with me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> on the phone, I'd have drove off by then. <laughs> well, they shouldn't. Well, I was going to say you shouldn't be on your phone in the car, but you were still wearing your saw. And the other one, well, there was no chance with that, was there? I mean, he <laughs> dropped my side at road. Uh, at least you didn't fall asleep this time. No. <laughs> That's another yeah. story. That's another yeah. story, Wendy. Another story, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> when did the test go on night shift and drove home and had to go the long way around because the road was shut, so I fell asleep behind the road and yeah, and the oh, wheel. Oh, God. If we, get chance to, if we ever get a chance to meet Wendy Steve, she's never going to go anywhere near your car, you know that, don't you? <laughs> I don't think I'll be meeting her that often if she lives down in Essex. <laughs> it's not going to give me a lift home or anything. <laughs> <laughs> never know with Steve. He goes off. <laughs> Look at him now, he's in fucking Spain for two weeks. You never know where he's going. Yeah, be. true, true. <laughs> I, have, I have visited more members than James in the group. Yeah, I've been a bit more dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a long word for it, mate. Visit, uh, visit Anil in Grimsby. Yeah, that's no, experience. We, wow. We're planning. Um, well, say planning. We we mentioned it um a while ago when we were going to do like a Max and Paddy style road trip at some point, mm. and just hire a camper van or borrow one and just go all over the country. Like amazing. Go this north, go this yeah. south, east, just visiting. All these yeah. different single pairs. Yeah, do it. Do it. Definitely. I'm Why not? Driving. James is driving. I, I, <laughs> I'm going to remind him where we are. <laughs> yes. You, you navigate. It's going to be hilarious. We need to film it if we do it. We will do it. We'll do it. It'll be a lot of members to get around, don't we? Mm. I know, yeah. Might have to do Pretty well. Yeah. Spins. So how did you uh, come across the Facebook group out of interest, Wendy? I can't remember, to be honest, but I think either I saw saw it on somebody else's page or I'm not... Yeah. Oh, did he see? What did you say? Was it the Christmas is coming song? Was that what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was um, either some somebody shared it or... Um, yeah, it's probably because of sharing and I noticed it, clicked on and I thought... Okay. Um, again, trying to branch out a little bit. Let's let's join and see what you guys are up to. Yeah. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Actually, really enjoyed it. I wish I had some more time um, to dedicate it, but a bit busy, as you know. <laughs> um, I think one but of yeah. The comments you made was you and Steve were chatting about a song or something, and and Steve said, "Oh, I'm sure James could do some dodgy dance to this," which is what. <laughs> yeah, that's it, fun. I did yeah, a really I... dance to uh, J-Lo, Let's Get Loud, didn't that? That was so good, yeah. So and... good. <laughs> so it was yeah. really nice to talk because everybody was just interacting with each other straight away, even speaking to, like, commenting to me and stuff, which is lovely. It's really good. Yeah. He is a better dancer, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Than you. It's not difficult, is it? <laughs> I left. I left. I left to post a routine and see if you can upgrade I'm, it. I'm no good at routines. I'm free. I'm freestyler. <laughs> I can't. I'm, I'm freestyler. I can't follow routine. Oh no. Okay. You're good. You're out. <laughs> oh, I just do my own thing. <laughs> As you can probably that, tell. There we go. Wrong. I know. We, <laughs> terrible parents. <laughs> It's one of them things, wasn't it? We've spoke about this a little bit, uh, Wendy, about things that we enjoy. And I said to you that I really enjoy singing and dancing, but I'm not particularly good at either of them, especially singing. I'm tone deaf, but you'll probably be able to um, relate to this. With it's, it's a good release, isn't it? It's good for the yeah. song, but singing. It's, it's it's a bit like exercise, you know. It it, re- it makes you feel good, doesn't it? Well, I think yes. it does anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Um... The sort of stereotype of, or you know, when you're feeling down or depressed or anxious, you know, get some exercise, um, get some sleep, do this, do that. And you think, oh, I've read all these things. I think, well, it's easier said than done. But and that's why I sort of mentioned that, you know, actually find something 
that you can use that you actually enjoy because that's what they're saying get up and do something get up get out of that mindset and 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 start moving whether it be exercise whether it be dancing you know why why do you have to go to a dance class to have some exercise why can't you go to you know what i'm going to stick a metallica album on and i'm just going to rock it out for the next 10 minutes no who cares nobody cares but that's for the next 10 minutes i'm going to keep rocking it out until i'm sweating because before you know it after, and if you are disciplined in doing that and you actually go for it, just let it out and you switch it off after 10 minutes. So you sit there and you're like, right. Do you know what? It's not got rid of my problems, but I feel a whole, hell of a lot better. It, it really does. And, and singing's the same. I think in regards to singing with the words, as you know, um, I always, when I'm teaching singing, relate to the whole Bridget Jones all by myself song, you know, when she's in that kind of state and she's feeling sorry for herself and that song is so iconic for that moment um she's not necessarily singing she's not dancing but she's just letting out her emotion and that makes her feel a lot better and it kind of cuts to the next day where she's up she's got all the self-help books and they're all thrown in the bin and all the wine bottles are thrown in the bin and she feels a lot better and it's all a transition from that day before of as I've mentioned before that indulging in those down moments of just going do you know what it's okay to feel like this and I'm just gonna indulge in it but tomorrow is a new day all by myself into a, into a, a, a wine bottle <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't think I could cope with James doing that <laughs> oh. you know what the thing is though everyone says to me like we've got a good friend of mine he's like oh that video he was like you're tone deaf I know a bum note and I was like yeah I don't care mate I didn't sing that song so everyone could look at me and say oh wow what a good yeah. thing is because I know I'm one of the world's worst singers but I don't care that wasn't the point no you still enjoy doing it and you don't do it for the rest you know people to say how good you are you, I did it for a laugh and yeah. and just as a to be silly and that's mm -hmm what I enjoy about it and I think you, you should you should take that as a, as a really good compliment because again nobody knows on that day what kind of day you had nobody knows how you're feeling at that moment um and again even just from your you guys commenting on me saying you know great you're really motivational and inspirational and stuff and I think am I really oh okay well obviously that that's just me speaking from how I'm feeling and trying to get it get it all out and you know I can talk for England as you'll probably know I go on and on and on um because it helps me it helps me to get it all out and I'm very expressive I use my hands and I talk you know talk and talk and talk that's how I get it out but then when I think so, but that's that's me dealing with my trauma and that's dealing with my situation I wouldn't necessarily call it motivational and inspirational but if it is that's brilliant let's post some more let's help now I'm helping other people by helping myself. And that's exactly what you're doing. And that I think that's what the whole point of the group is, for us all to be experiencing our own situations and showing how we all deal with it. Because in turn, it's kind of that passing passing it on and helping. Yeah, because what are you doing? Like James rightly said, when he was complimenting you, I couldn't get a bloody word in because he sent that many compliments to you. So I just... <laughs> what are you doing? was you're enticing and encouraging our other members that might not have said anything before to say, oh, is this new person on the block? Oh, well, if she's got the spirit to say what she wants, then maybe I will. And, yeah. and that's what it's all about. That's why we're called United, because me and James have said it so many times. We're just two average guys. <laughs> That we're trying to bring everyone together basically to help us parent our own kids. Mm. Yeah, that's why we have the group because we need so much help. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got 900 odd people to help us finally get it right now. We still haven't got it right. But <laughs> that's all a ploy. Yeah. <laughs> I think Wendy's uh, let out, well, not let out, but she's given us a little bit of an insight into a, a wild side that I think she's got. She mentioned Metallica. Mm. One thing, a rock chick. She's got her tattoos as well, haven't you? So, oh yeah, she knows. Yeah. <laughs> Are they your, what, kids? They're my, yeah, my kids' names. Yeah. Yeah. So on Christmas Day, all our parents are going to be rocking to Metallica and signing up for tattoos for the new. <laughs> and and chocolate and wine. Don't forget the chocolate and wine. Hey, Steve, <laughs> I'm I'm really actually surprised that you've not got a tattoo. 
while you've been on holiday of the single parent <laughs> United logo. Gosh, uh, yeah, like, what a great idea. Coming back with it on his arm. <laughs> Everywhere is shut like that, mate. It's not possible. Uh, oh. Excuses, excuses. The way <laughs> I would not be surprised if you did that. I, I'm not the tattoo type of guy, am I? I know you're not. No, nothing against them. I just, uh, I just picture myself at 95 in a car on going, why the hell have I got that? <laughs> <laughs> when See, you see some good places, though, because you don't really get wrinkly there, do you, too bad? No, no. Like, yeah. preserve quite well. Yeah. <laughs> to do that when she's older, though, she'll have our three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Steve, when, when are you? Uh, when are you back? Are you back already? So um, I decided to extend it till next Saturday because there's no point us coming home because we're not allowed to see anybody for ten days. And mm. um, so, Do you but I'm Christmas Day in in Spain, are you? I'm downsizing to a little apartment kitchenette instead of an all inclusive hotel. It's gonna hit Harry hard when he realizes there's no ice cream on tap, <laughs> <laughs> pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it'll be but, different anyway, won't it? Be good experience for you. Yeah. So my, Tomorrow morning's last breakfast will be one of them, you know, where you take a big suitcase and just pile all the stuff in, all the food to last us for a week. So. Wait, yeah. <laughs> oh. Just be nibbling on everything every day. Just make it last. <laughs> Over here, does Harry? You have to have a man. Yeah. If you're over six years old, so it's been a nightmare. Because he keeps oh. losing his mask or forgetting it. Just in the shops, you mean? Yeah, anywhere. Anywhere you're walking. Oh. Even if outside? In... Yeah, if you're walking around, you've got to have a mask on. Right. Oh. Any final tips? Or song? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Do you want to break into a song? Uh, oh, no. I think, yeah, I'm not really sure. All, all I can say is just... Um, yeah, just keep going and, like I say, indulge in the down days. Don't think of... Oh, well, one thing I will say um, is at the end of each day, which I found really helpful for me, is to... You don't have to write it down, but to write down one thing that you've accomplished every day, um, even if it is just getting out of bed, if that's the case for sometimes, um, because that is an achievement in itself. Some, you know, depends on where you are in that place. Um you know, for, for me, example, one, one example is I didn't answer that text message that was there to antagonise me and I didn't do that today. I normally would and I always would and that would then lead on to something else and I didn't do that today. To somebody else, that's it's not really a big thing, but to me, that's a really big achievement and I've done that today. And then tomorrow, it's, you know, the same thing and to do that, and especially if you write them down, sometimes at the end of the week, if you are having that really rubbish day it's really handy just to look at those things and think you know what I am moving on I am doing well and I'm, I'm getting somewhere because it's really easy just to think oh, I've just had enough I can't do it anymore I've had enough stop just want some peace yeah. um and it just takes some little pick pick me up sometimes like something especially if it's personal to you that you've written down mm. to look at and go ah, it's okay no I'm all right I'm all right new week new day yeah, I think you can do that, James. One, one thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we tried it. I tried it I know, a couple of months back about the washing up. Just trying to, that was my goal every day, just to make sure I wash up because I'm a bit, a bit lazy sometimes and don't always wash up. And it, yeah, I did it. I did do it for a little bit, but still, tell you, I'm a bit. Um, I'll do something for a few weeks and then start exercise. I'll exercise for a week or so then stop I'll do the washing up for a week so then stop and I'm a bit bad like that I flit around I can't I don't see things through enough I love that, that list you've got up in your kitchen with the big spider diagram do you know what I mean yeah it's not there anymore <laughs> <laughs> no wonder <laughs> there's, a, there's a timetable up there for the kids now um, of what um, what is it what uniform they need on whether it's normal school uniform, PE kit or forest school um, and what they need to take for dinner and if they need a snack, that's what's on the wall now. So because so, there's no way I'll remember. You know what it's like at school. Take the wellies, take the trainers, take this, take that. It's a nightmare, isn't it? 
So that's what's on the wall at the moment. <laughs> The thing is, James, is that is that one of is is that one of the things that you wish you did do that you were more consistent, or is it just because you think oh, I've done it now, I'm not really I'm not really bothered, or do you think oh bugger, I like, I wish I'd carried it on and I haven't. I always do that. Uh, yeah, w- yeah, I wish I could. Like with the exercise, it's just it's like I'm, there's a wall in front of me and I can't physically do it. I just there's something pulling me back or stopping me from doing it. Strange. So, so why not for 2021 you make that one of your accomplishments that you do? We try that every year, Wendy. Every yeah. year. started it in uh, 2014 or something. <laughs> yeah, you can well be, yeah. consi- be consistent. Not just do the one thing, not just the washing up, but you you find something and you make sure that you're consistent. And you drive through. Oh, I'm the, challenge I'm, you. I'm really good at. I know what I need to do. Doing it is completely different. Yeah, I'm not bad at telling people what I think they should do. Yeah, I don't do it myself. <laughs> well, to to James's credit, for 2020, he's had a great year on the group, supporting people. I mean, I can't count how many people off the top of my head, but you've helped. Uh, you've helped me when I had my little blip in summer. Um, so you had a fantastic year, mate. Despite your other little problems. You've done all right, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. You have as well. You, you, <laughs> you know, we've, I think considering what a terrible year it's been, we've we've done, we have achieved quite a lot, and um, we should be we should be proud of of the group we've got, and well, the people in it. Like, I mean, Wendy, mm. speaking to you tonight, it's I know that us three would get on really well, mm. and, and, and we've made we've made some really good friends, and there's some, some amazing people in that group. The talent, yeah. the talent that we're finding out about at the moment. Guy called oh. Jerry's a great singer. Wendy, you you do everything. You're like singing, dancing, everything. There's, <laughs> Thank there's you. Good people who singers and artists, and we've got a mm. very very talented group. And hopefully next year we'll be able to bring these talents together a little bit more. And I mean, I know you're going to do a karaoke thing online for it, which will be fantastic. But next year is, we've got big plans, haven't we? Big plans for next year. We have, mate. Yeah, we we we've got. Well, we can't mention them because we're trying to keep them surprises. But <laughs> we've delivered this year, though, on our uh, plans, haven't we? We've, we've done all right. We've done all uh, right. Yeah. yeah. There's only a Christmas song that wasn't quite what we planned, but... <laughs> no. Well, what, what I mean by that, Wendy, was what we had planned, and it was COVID that was against us. I had contacts for a studio and everything. I had, <laughs> had a vocal coach lined up. But we couldn't do it because of COVID. And what we wanted to do was create a group Christmas song to release. We, had, we even had a DJ in the family that was going to help us get it released. And uh, we couldn't do it because we didn't have the time. So we had to go with Plan B, which is James. <laughs> <laughs> Make it sound so good. Plan B, James. Studio and the DJ yeah. and all that. But no, Plan B. James. I'm happy, I'm happy with Plan B. I thought it would have been C, D, E, F. I'm really Great. happy with that. Thanks, mate. All in one. <laughs> I know. And then we did, all of us were going to sing as a group, me, James, and the members. Amazing, yeah. And we weren't, we weren't going to be like big singers in it. We were just going to sing a little bit in it. And then we wanted the kids involved, didn't we, in the chorus. That would have been uh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So now we're looking at Christmas 2021. Fingers yeah. Crossed. Mm. Yeah. So that's not so great, especially with the kids as well. They'll love that. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's been absolutely lovely chatting to you, Wendy. Thank you for giving up your Thanks. time. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's been absolutely great. And um, so, just to say to everybody, um, to like and subscribe here on YouTube if you want to, and you can also follow us on Instagram, Single Parents United, and also have a look at our Facebook page, Single Parents United. But from all of us, well, Christmas is coming, guys. That's all I can say. And I hope, hope you have a fantastic Christmas. See ya. Bye. And take care, Steve. Hope you get back safe.